As our series starts on episode 1, we see a woman walking into a facility and aiming what looks like a big cannon at the sun. Our scene then immediately shifts, after the intro, to a bunch of cops who just got to a crime scene and it appears as though a woman, a very smart scientist, has offed herself with sleeping pills. And as the cops were investigating and they were doing their thing and ruling it as a person who offed herself, the military get to the scene and they have an order to take over the investigation. They also have with them Captain Shy. He's the guy that's in the car that's playing Snake. Captain Shy is a very eccentric detective and he's got an unorthodox way of doing things. After making a couple of cops uncomfortable, in the morning, he goes to a famous scientist's house to investigate the murder. This scientist, Wang, is very disturbed by the captain, especially because he was so brash and rude. Then Wang gets more uncomfortable when the captain asks him if he's had any contact with the frontiers of science. It's a group of scientists and engineers and such. With the way Shy was interrogating him, Wang didn't really want to talk, but the cops then calmly talk to Wang, then they inform him that the general has invited people like him and a bunch of other scientists to this really special meeting. The next day on this meeting, everybody's briefed that there's a group that's hunting down scientists worldwide. And not just your average scientists, I'm talking about some of the best scientists in the world. And the word attack is technically misused here because all of these people technically killed themselves. They, they weren't killed by other people. The general here, and the military, believe that there's a group of people who are making them do this because it's difficult to believe that all these scientists worldwide are just offing themselves for fun or something. As the briefing continues, the general asks Wang if he notices a similarity between all these scientists that off themselves and Wang seems to be concerned with only one name, Yang Dong. That's the woman that we saw earlier, whose house was swarming with cops after she offed herself using sleeping pills. Wang has a memory of taking a picture of her in this facility, but he doesn't say anything to the captain nor to the general. All the scientists on the list off themselves within the last two months. And the most bizarre thing is not the fact that they off themselves, it was actually the fact that they all had the same reason to do it. And this reason was shown on all the notes that they wrote, and they all said that physics doesn't exist. And that was apparently the reason why they died. And if you're wondering who the brooding guy with the long hair is, he used to be Yang's boyfriend before she died. He gives Wang the note that she wrote before she took the pills, and it's very similar to all the notes that other scientists wrote. It says that physics will never exist and never will, and that she feels responsible for doing this, but that she has no choice. After the meeting, the General and Captain Shai try to talk to Wang, and they question him about this group, the Frontiers of Science. They've apparently contacted Wang before, and they wanted him to attend this gathering, and he did in fact go, but most of what they were saying had nothing to do with his field of study. After inquiring about the group and beating around the bush a bit, the General comes out and asks Wang to go to the Frontier of Science and join them and serve as a mole to the military. Wang refuses to do this because he's already uncomfortable enough with what's going on, then the general walks him out and tells him something that makes him more uncomfortable. He tells him that something big's about to go down, and it's probably going to be one of the worst disasters to ever hit mankind. On this scene we also realize that Wang is a scientist that works with nanotech, and if he finishes his project, he will have a material that's so strong that it can almost cut through anything. As Wang was leaving, we see a flashback of that memory when he first took pictures of Dr. Yang Dong. He was in this big laboratory with a giant particle accelerator, and Dr. Yang was also working there, and they were attempting to do something so revolutionary that it would have changed human lives forever. As our scene shifts, we see Dr. Yang's mentor, an older scientist, and he's with a woman who gives him these test results that even Dr. Yang herself was not aware of at the time because the experiment was not run yet. And if the experiment wasn't run yet, there was no way to collect the data. So how this woman obtained the data is part of the mystery of our series. And the plot thickens, as the mysterious woman walks out of his house and starts praying, and the man decides to use his defibrillator to off himself. Present day, 10 months later, we see the general and Captain Shai talking about why the frontiers of science contacted Wang as he has nothing to do with physics, he just does nanotech. And because the group contacted him, Captain Shai and the general figure out that he must be special in some way. And the episode wraps up as we go back to the opening scene, and we see a vague reference on a bunch of legal papers to something called the solar mathematical model, and we also see the same lady that was about to press the button and she actually does press it this time but it wasn't a cannon like we expected it was more of a signal that was sent to the sun and this is where episode one wraps up
As we start the next episode, we first see Ding and Wang having a lot of wine and talking about Yang Dong. Ding is heartbroken and he tells Wang that he bought this house because he was going to marry Yang Dong. As the conversation continues, Wang tells him what happened after the meeting yesterday and that the general spoke to him privately and told him to join the frontiers of science. Wang tells him that even though the general asked, he rejected the offer and Ding, who is incredibly drunk, is confused about this frontiers of science group because Yang had nothing to do with them and at this point he's only looking for somebody to blame for her death. Wang talks to him about the note that she wrote and what it is that she meant when she said that there was no physics anymore. To demonstrate, Ding makes Wang hit an 8 ball about 5 times at different positions and angles. They kept rotating the table 90 degrees every time and after they were done, Ding tries to explain what just happened to Wang. Ding talks about how the 8 ball went in the pouch every time Yang hit it. But he asks him, what if the 8 ball behaved differently every time you hit it? What if at one time it went straight through the pool table, then outside of the house, then outside of the world, and went through the solar system? Then what if the second time, the pool ball just flew like a sparrow and looked for an exit? And what if the one after just didn't go in and behaved differently? He kept asking him about these seemingly impossible scenarios, but Wang didn't understand what he was talking about, and neither did I. But then Ding goes on to say that this was exactly what happened when Dr. Yang Dong performed her experiment with the giant particle accelerator. And by this, I'm referring to the particles that acted in a way that was impossible according to the laws of physics. So this was exactly why after the experiments that Dr. Yang performed, she concluded that there was no such thing as physics. Now this is a very difficult pill to swallow, especially if you know anything about physics because what does this mean? What is the world? What is reality? Wang gets very confused and at the same time incredibly scared and as he was leaving Ding's apartment, he starts to hallucinate about the possibilities of there being no physics. Gravity would not exist, force and mass would be impossible to determine, and space and time would also be a thing of the past. As our scene shifts, we're taken back to the 70s, then we see that same lady that we saw in episode 1 and there was what looked like a hidden facility that only the higher ups in the communist party were aware of. When we go back to the present, we see that Wang has changed his mind and he goes to the frontiers of science. After a couple of introductions, Shen, who appears to be in charge here, explains the theory of the farmer and the shooter. So the theory goes like this. Let's say there was a shooter who intentionally wanted to shoot his target 10 centimeters apart. But this specific target, unbeknownst to the shooter, had inside of it an incredibly tiny civilization that were very intelligent. You can say that they're equally as intelligent as human beings. And one of their scientists would notice the whole and he would make a physics discovery, a law that every time they traveled 10 centimeters, they would find a hole. So to this civilization, what they thought was a physics law was just a random occurrence decided by a higher being that decided to put the holes 10 centimeters apart. Now this was the shooter theory, now let's observe the farmer theory. So on a farm, there was a farmer who fed his turkeys every time at 11 a.m. And amongst the turkeys, there was a scientist turkey. And he observed this strange phenomenon for about a year, and he would make this physics discovery that every Every time on 11 a.m., the farmer would always provide the turkeys with food. But one day, the farmer would get there on time, but that day was Thanksgiving and he slaughters all the turkeys. So again, what the turkeys thought that they discovered, what they thought was a law, a natural physics law, was technically something that was beyond their comprehension and when Thanksgiving came, they couldn't understand it, but they all died. This theory is supposed to suggest that we human beings are like the turkeys or the tiny civilization living on the target, and that all the physics discoveries that we thought that we made was not actual truth but a frontier of science. After one of the scientists freaks out for being considered a turkey, Wang walks out of the facility and is met by Captain Shai who seems to be stalking him. He asks him to report whatever it was that he heard inside, but Wang refuses to do so. As we progress through the episode, we find out that Captain Shai himself is not fully aware aware of what's going on. The general is actually keeping most of the information away from anyone. At Yang's funeral, Wang approaches Yang's mom and tries to give her the photo that he took of Yang, but he notices a timestamp in the middle of the photo and he decides to investigate further. He calls the guy that prepared the photo and sold him the film, but the guy tells him that there's nothing wrong with the supplies, maybe it's something to do with his camera. And this timestamp that appeared on Yang's photo was not the only one, so Wang takes a couple of new pictures and after a lot of hours of deduction, he figures out 
that these timestamps are actually decreasing and it's a countdown. And the episode ends with his discovery that something is gonna happen in about 49 days. Episode 3 continues where we left off inside the dark room as Wang made the discovery. He was in the dark room for so long and in a bit his wife and daughter came back home. He seems very agitated and scared for obvious reasons. Then he comes up with this bright idea. He inserts new film into his camera and asks his wife to take a bunch of pictures. His wife notices just how tense he was and asks him if he's okay but he just tells her to keep taking pictures. After telling his wife to keep taking pictures until the film ends, Wang goes back inside the dark room, then something bizarre happens as he starts hallucinating but this time the hallucination itself was so vivid. His wife knocks on the door because she finished the film and after analyzing the results, he sees that all the pictures that his wife took didn't have any timestamp on them. From this he discovers that there's nothing wrong with his camera or his film, it's actually him. There's something wrong with him. But he really wanted to be sure, so he goes across the hall and takes another camera from his neighbor and he and his very cute daughter Dodo take a bunch of pictures around the house. They use both his camera and the neighbor's camera just to make sure, then a couple of hours later after analyzing the results again, Wang gets the same results. All the photos that his daughter took didn't have any timestamps, but the photos that he took with both cameras did. This was irrefutable proof, and he's also called a bunch of experts just to make sure that this kind of thing can never happen, and they've all told him that it's impossible. And being faced with this bizarre realization, he needed to clear his head so he goes out for a drive. But what he didn't know was Captain Shy was tailing him everywhere he went. As Wang kept driving throughout the night, the headlights of an incoming truck seemed brighter than usual. And as he was trying to adjust his eyes, the countdown appeared in front of him. He then makes a dangerous turn and stops, and when he kept looking around, the countdown was always in his field of vision. Seeing how he's behaving from afar, Captain Shy makes a call to his colleague and asks him to check if Dr. Yang behaved differently before she took those pills and died. After making the call, Captain Shy immediately rushes to Wang's car and starts banging on the window, asking him to open the door. When he comes out, he looks incredibly disoriented, and Shy asks him what he saw that made him swerve the car that way, but Wang just lies to him and tells him that the incoming truck scared him and that's why he did it, and he then leaves. Here in this segment, our scene shifts to a small section where we see Shen, the head of the Frontiers of Science, receiving this text that reads, you mustn't disobey our lord's will. As we progress throughout the episode, Wang goes back home and tells his wife what's going on because she's a doctor, and she recommends that she knows a friend who's an eye doctor and that he go to him immediately tomorrow. And when tomorrow came and Wang went to the doctor, the eye doctor performed every possible test that he could, but there was nothing that he could find that was wrong with Wang's eyes. They then start to have a conversation about what he's feeling, and since the doctor was a family friend, Wang tells him that he's actually seeing a countdown and it doesn't disappear even if he closes his eyes. The doctor tried to beat around the bush and tried not to say that it could be a mental disorder, and kept informing Wang that he's just tired and to just take a vacation with his wife and daughter. But Wang just got more angry as he felt as though the doctor was patronizing him. Later that night, he goes home and explains to his wife what's going on, but his wife tells him that both she and the eye doctor both think that what he's talking about is impossible. Hearing her response, Wang finally realizes that he's not gonna get an answer from anyone, not regular people, not doctors, but there was somebody that he thought of that may have an answer for him. So, right then and there, as he sat across his wife, he makes a call to Shen, who immediately texts him with a location to meet her tomorrow. So the next day, he goes to the location, and the guy that opened the door for him seems to be completely unconcerned as to who Wang is or why he's here, and the only thing that he's doing is just reading and going through all these papers, but he stops for a moment and tells Wang to go upstairs to find Shen. Wang goes up the stairs and finds Shen in a room inside of this virtual reality machine, and in a bit, they start to have a conversation, and Wang describes exactly what's going on to him, and he also brought the photos with the timestamps as proof. But Shen's response was very surprising and sad at the same time. Technically, it had nothing to do with Wang's problem as she tells him to just stop doing his research with nanotech. He asks her why and goes on to explain that it's a key project and that no other facility is working on it, but her only response would be that he stops his research immediately. But from what she was saying and everything that's been happening throughout these past few months, in that moment Wang realizes that the frontiers of science are more than just an academic group of people. They're technically, and I quote, a connection 
connection to real life. And episode 3 ends with Shen's response, which was that the frontiers of science was much more complex and more fundamental than Wang thought. As we start episode 4, we see that Captain Shai made it his job to tell Wang. Later that night, as Wang was back home, his wife suggests that maybe they should see a psychiatrist, because he hasn't been sleeping well for the past few days. He talks to her about the shooter and farmer theory, but she responds by saying that she doesn't want to think about it, as contemplating the idea that human beings might not be in control of their own lives is quite a frightening one. She tells him to go to bed because it was late, but he responds by saying that he's going to the lab, and on the next scene we see that he slept the entire night there, and he's woken up by a young intern who's a fan of him. Wang's field is nanotechnology and applied physics, and he's one of the few researchers in the world that's proven his theory and made a material that he hypothesized would solve a lot of problems. But the process of making this material, this super strength nano material, was quite an expensive one, and his intern presents him with a report, and most of an engineers have hit a wall with their experiments, and since materials inside the laboratory need to be replaced, Wang uses this as a reason to stop the research for three days. He's never technically turned off the machine ever since the project started, and as soon as he does, the countdown that he kept seeing for days now stops. When he stops seeing it, he gets frustrated because he somehow now believes that Shen is responsible for that countdown as she's the one that wanted him to stop the research and it's no coincidence that he stopped seeing the countdown as soon as he did what she asked. He calls her and demands some answers and he admits that he doesn't know how she's actually pulling this off but he claims that it's some kind of trick to stop his research. Shen then responds by saying that if he really wants to know the grand scheme of things, in just two days by the 14th, she tells him that the universe will reveal itself to him if he goes to a certain place. She then asks him a bunch of other questions and asks him when he plans to restart his project and he tells her that it's three days from now and she tells him that the countdown will continue by then and he can observe it if he goes to a place that shows the cosmic microwave background. To make matters worse for Wang, Captain Shai, who is still stalking him, comes to his office and confronts him about what's going on. He also reveals to Wang that he knows about the countdown as he's intimidated that doctor that Wang went to into giving him information. When inquiring about the countdown, Wang doesn't tell him anything and just tells him that it's a rare eye disease that sometimes occurs. And before the very intimidating Captain Shai left, he tells him that everybody that contacted Shen has died and this is also true for Dr. Yang as well. The next day, Wang goes to see Dr. Yang's mom at her house. She was there with her grandchildren and she got back from the grocery store, and as they converse about Yang, her mother tells him that even as a child, she showed potential in abstract thinking, and so she taught her everything she knew so that Yang could grow up to be a scientist. Before he left, Wang asks her where he can observe the cosmic microwave background, and Yang's mom suggests that she knows a place, and she's also taught somebody that works in that kind of facility, and she arranges for him to have a meeting on the 14th. And again, as he was leaving, the house, Captain Shai has also followed him here and he asks him a lot of uncomfortable questions. One of them was that Captain Shai suspects Yang's mom as she wasn't that emotional during the funeral. And seeing that he's not gonna get a taxi at this hour and that Captain Shai is not gonna stop until he gets all his questions answered, Wang decides to buy him some food and answer all his questions in detail. In the middle of their conversation, we see a scene with the general as he was requested to enter an important meeting, and on the meeting with various international military groups, it's revealed to the general that nine more scientists have offed themselves in Helsinki. As we then go back to Captain Shai and Wang at the restaurant, Captain Shai reveals to him that he's investigated every scientist that killed themselves, and as he was investigating Dr. Yang Dong, he decided to creep in every detail of her life, involving all her social circles and everywhere that she likes to hang out. So one day during his investigation, he goes to her favorite cafe and acquires CCTV camera footage, then on the footage he sees Dr. Yang meeting with Shen. On the video footage, we see Shen giving Dr. Yang some kind of folder, but Captain Shai reveals to Wang that after the police raided her house after she died, that specific file was never found because it was missing. Using all of this as evidence, Captain Shai tries to convince Wang, since Dr. Yang died after 5 days of meeting Shen and taking that file, she and the frontiers of science must have something to do with all these dying scientists. And the episode ends as Wang goes home and breaks something as he now feels completely powerless and frustrated and slowly begins to realize that possibly he may also be a turkey inside of a farm. As we take a look at episode 5, it starts out with a girl crashing into Captain Shai's car with her scooter. 
She first pretends not to know what's going on, and she tells Captain Shy that her scooter is uninsured, but moments later we find out that she's actually a journalist that was tailing him, and she's also investigating the death of all those scientists. She then goes on to make an offer to exchange information, but since she was tape recording him in secret and he figured it out, and since Captain Shy hates reporters, he refuses. Next we see Wang going to that facility that Dr. Yang's mom suggested that he go to since she knew somebody that worked there. The man that she knew that works in the facility was very kind to Wang, and he shows him around and explains everything that he could. When they make it inside the laboratory, Wang inquires about the microwave background and how to track it if there's even a slight spike in microwave radiation. And the guy shows him that there are two satellites inside the facility that he's running that are there just to track microwave interference, but he tells him not to get his hopes up as that kind of thing will never happen, and he also adds the fact that if it did happen, it would be millions and millions of years after they've died. He says all this to state the improbability of such an event, because if the result actually come through and this event actually took place, well, it wouldn't be something short of a miracle. But Wang was curious to find out what happens at 1 o'clock, as Shen informed him that the universe itself would start flickering just for him from 1 to 5 a.m. And just as she said, when the time came, the universe did start flickering. Wang and Sha, the man that works in the facility, are both shocked to see this, then to confirm the fact that it was not a malfunction from the satellites, they call another facility and have them deliver their results, but when they look at it, it was the same thing. The universe was indeed flickering. They still couldn't believe the data that was coming through. Then Sha comes up with a bright idea and informs Wang that they can actually see this with their own eyes if they have 3K glasses. Since Wang needed to be sure of what he was seeing, he travels to another facility and gets the 3K glasses, and when he put them on, he found out that the data was actually correct and the universe was indeed flickering all around. This is obviously irrefutable proof, and he calls Shen to ask what happens after the countdown ends and he kept asking very aggressively, but her only answer was that she doesn't know. He then sits on a bench and starts crying, and Captain Shy was tailing him all along, and he comes up to him and offers to buy him a drink. They sit at a restaurant and grab a few drinks and start eating some food, and Wang questions Captain Shy if he's ever asked himself philosophical questions before. Captain Shy says no to all the questions that Wang asks him, and Wang goes on to explain that he's seeing a countdown in his head. But from the tone of his voice, Captain Shy knew that what Wang was scared of was what would happen after the countdown ends. So he tries to indirectly comfort him, telling him that even if all hell broke loose, they wouldn't need physics and they would just live a simple life like their ancestors did in the past. Wang realizes that Captain Shy actually wants to protect him and wants to stop him from being another scientist that killed himself, so as soon as they got back from the restaurant, Wang gives him all the photos that he took that had those timestamps, and Captain Shy's opinion of Wang starts to change as he realizes that he wasn't just some coward that didn't want to cooperate, he was just facing a crisis that he didn't know how to deal with at the time. And for the first time in a couple of weeks, Wang finally gets a good night's sleep, then wakes up to his daughter asking him to come to school and give a lecture about physics to her and her friends. He decides to go and he gives a physics speech and from his speech we understand that he has newfound hope in physics and he's also decided not to let failure get in his way as we later see him presenting new statistics to his company and deciding to restart his nanotech project because he's finally realized that whatever happens he needs to move forward with his life because in the end if he truly is a turkey in a farm that's about to die there's really not much he could do but live out the rest of his days in peace and tranquility. He also explains to the children that failure is just a part of life and whatever it was that we thought that we discovered, it can always change at any time because that is just the science of physics. It's the science of refuting what we thought we knew in order to make us discover what we didn't know and realize the possibility of things that we thought were impossible. Our episode then closes with newfound resolve for Wang as he is now more determined than ever to continue his project and discover what actual truth is and we also realize that Captain Shy has made the same discovery that Wang did, and the episode wraps up with him presenting his case to the general and showing him all the timestamps on the photos that Wang took. Let's collect 1500 likes under this video and don't forget to subscribe if you want to watch the rest of this series. So please, subscribe.